Shalom, shalom, mishpocha. Welcome to another edition of the Ray Bash's Ramblings. I'm your host, Rabbi Yehuda ben Shomer, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about customs and traditions. Uh, people in religious circles, specifically in uh, Christianity and uh, in some parts of Messianic Judaism, there is a big misconception regarding traditions and customs, and uh, it's like traditions and customs are painted with one big broad stroke and saying that they're all bad, that they're all evil, that they're all man-made, that they're all man-made doctrines and tradition of men and of demons. And that's not necessarily so. I mean, not all traditions are bad, not all customs are bad. The, the only time when customs and traditions are bad is when they go against the Torah, they completely contradict what the Torah commands and what the Torah says, or the tradition or the custom has been raised to the level of Torah itself and even observed and put higher than the Torah itself. And people are fooled into believing that this custom or tradition is actually a command when it's not. That's when traditions are bad. Um, and, and, you know, Yeshua uh, combated the Pharisees all the time in this regards on the bad parts of tradition. But yet, you know, there was a lot of traditions that the Pharisees... Um, the, the Pharisees did, which were good, which were correct. They wore prayer shawls. They wore talits, you know. They wore tefillin. There wasn't anything wrong with that because the Torah commands that. But what they did is they were using that to show off. You know, they were saying, hey, you know, look how long my seat are. You know, just, just look at them. Um, I'm obeying the commandment. Or, you know, when they would wear tefillin, and back then tefillin was, was worn from sunrise to sundown, a man had tefillin on all the time. So to make sure everybody knew they were fulfilling the commandment, they would make these big old honking tefillin where, um, you know, there, there has been anti-Semitic pictures made of and tradition that says that Jews really have a horn on their head or they have horns. And it, and it came about because of Jews... Um, wearing tefillin and over exaggerating the tefillin and, and the tefillin actually looked like a horn it was huge or they would broaden the straps of their tefillin their phylacteries and they would just make the hey look everybody hey see I'm obeying the commandment it's just like the Pharisee who was obeying the commandment of, of um, you know of, of giving to charity you know he would he would give alms to the poor but yet what did he do he blew a shofar hey everybody look i'm giving to a poor person i'm righteous i'm holy i'm better than you you know he, he was doing the right things but going about it the wrong way you know they created these customs and traditions that would nullify the effect of obeying the commandments of obeying the torah that's when customs and traditions that's when they're wrong that's when they're bad that's when you should stay away from i'm not a care right I never will be, nor will ever will be a Karite. A Karite is sola scriptura, which means solely scripture. That's great. I think that's fine. But you're going to run into trouble when you, you, you just go by the scriptures alone because when the commandments tell you to do something, you're stuck. You're like, um, okay, the commandment says to don't to fill in, but... You know, to put this sign up on your... Up, uh, and it says literally in Hebrew, to put the sign up on your hand that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. Okay, the Hebrew says to literally do it, but the scriptures doesn't say how. I'm sola scriptura, so how do I fulfill that? How do I do that? Oh no, I'm in a conundrum. You know, so I'm not saying that there were two Torahs given at Mount Sinai, but there was a written Torah given, but I do believe there was an oral Torah that was passed down from God to Moses to, to the rest of Israel. Why? Because God put in the written Torah so many how, or so many to-dos, this is what you were to do, but he never explains how to do it. So by deductive reasoning, you know, by using reason and logic, it would occur to me that if the scriptures doesn't say there's a how, there must be, you know, somebody must know the how to fulfill this commandment. And therefore, you know, orally, there's some traditions that were passed from God to Moses on down. So, you know, the scripture say, says to bind the tefillin as a sign upon your arm and upon, upon your hand and upon uh, between your eyes. Okay, but the scripture doesn't say how to do it. The scriptures say that we're to have seat at the four corners of our garment, but it doesn't tell us how to wear them, doesn't tell us how to tie them. That's where customs, that's where traditions come in. And they're beautiful things. They're pregnant with meaning. You know, and so these are some oral traditions that have been passed down. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, customs and traditions, when they are viewed in the right way, um, it's kind of it's kind of man's way of giving back to God. God gave us the scripture. God gave us the Torah. We want to show our love and our adoration and, and our expression of fulfilling the commandments. So we come up with different customs and traditions on how to do that, on how to make it beautiful, ornate, and, and dramatic. 
not necessarily so everybody can see what we're doing, but to give back to God and say, this is our way of showing our love for you. We enjoy doing this commandment so much. This is how we are doing this commandment for you, God. You know, we've, we've made the tefillin. We've made the tzitzit. There's many different ways of tying tzitzit. And okay, and, and, and the, the Karaites, they say they're sola scriptura, but yet they have their own customs and traditions that they follow. They have their own way of tying tzitzit, and in my opinion, it's one of the most beautiful ways to tie tzitzit compared to the Ashkenazic way. That's just my opinion. But yet, where did they get that from? They didn't get how to tie that tzitzit from the, from the scriptures. There's no place in the scripture that says, okay, this is how you're to tie a seat seat, and it's to look like this, and boom, you have a Karaite seat seat. No, they come up with a custom and tradition themselves. Now, the customs and traditions are based on scriptural principles, based on scriptural passages and verses, and that's how we kind of you know, get that, so to speak. Another tradition that uh, is not commanded in scripture to follow, but Yeshua followed as a Passover Seder. He, had, he, he may not have had a, a Haggadah, but yet through the events of the Passover Seder he had, we can parallel it to the modern day Seder, which hasn't changed, which has rarely changed, has barely changed. And we can see, okay, Yeshua did this, this was the first cup, Yeshua did that, that's the second cup, and it follows right along with a modern day Haggadah. Where did, did, did uh, Sola Scriptura, where did you get it in scripture? Well, you didn't. You know, it was a custom, it was a tradition of man based on scriptural principles. Not only that, it says that Yeshua was at the temple during the Feast of Dedication. What's the Feast of Dedication? Hanukkah, because Hanukkah means dedication. It's the Feast of Dedication. We see that Yeshua celebrated Hanukkah. It's nowhere commanded to celebrate it in Scripture. Sola Scriptura, where'd you get it? It was a custom and a tradition, but we see that Yeshua had no problem following customs and traditions because Hanukkah is a beautiful tradition because it, 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 it celebrates the, the Jewish people and, and the conquering of evil and the reestablishing of the temple, the very temple that Yeshua walked in. The Shekinah glory was on, uh, was on the first temple, was on, was on Solomon's temple, you know? But, but the Shekinah never rested on the temple that Yeshua walked in. Why? Because Yeshua is the glory. Yeshua is the Shekinah himself in flesh. And he walked in and christened the temple that way, so to speak. He cleansed the temple. I mean, man, so where would we be without customs and traditions? It'd be a pretty bland, colorless life if we didn't have certain customs and traditions. I think they're great. I think they're beautiful. And so nobody can truly be sola scriptura because there's so many, I want you to do this, but God doesn't really tell you how to do it in the scripture. So you have to figure out a way to fulfill it if you're going to fulfill it at all. That's where customs, that's where traditions come in. This is, this is, this is my stance. If the tradition or custom lines up with Torah, keep it. If it doesn't, and if it contradicts it, chuck it out, throw it out. If it's a, if it's either or, you know, it, you know, if it enhances your walk with God, or it's something that you decide to, 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 to place upon yourself and do, that's great. Do it, but don't shove it down other people's throats, saying, "Well, you have to do this if you're really going to be Jewish, or you have to do this if you're really going to fulfill a commandment." Maybe it's a custom and tradition that that you know, you know, for instance, like the girdle, um, you know, during during prayer. Uh, there's no commandment that we have to don a girdle to pray, but I do. Why? Because I love the tradition behind it, because it symbolizes that I'm cutting off the lower animalistic extremities, and I'm focusing on the upper extremities, and it, it, it's kind of like a, 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 it's kind of like a seat. it's kind of like a, a, a string around the finger. I tie the girdle on, it reminds me to gird my loins with, with, with truth. You know, the armor of God, it reminds me to, to, um, to focus, to have more focus, saying, hey, I'm about to enter prayer, I'm doing something serious here, I can't be fooling around, you know? And I mean, John the Baptist wore a girdle. I mean, it was, it, it Elijah. It was tradition, but there's no commandment in Scripture to say to do it. That's a that's a tradition and a custom I choose to take upon myself, but I don't shove it down anybody else's throat because it's meaningful and it's beautiful to me and it, and it enhances my walk with God. Running out of time here. Hopefully, I've answered a lot of questions and explained some things for you. So shalom and shavuot tov. Bye bye.